Good evening. In the midst of growing controversy at home and escalating violence in Iraq, President Bush addressed the country tonight. The president reaffirmed America's commitment to the June 30th deadline for turning over power to the Iraqi people. He also focused on the serious violence in Iraq and said if more troops are needed, he will send them. He also defended the information given to him before the September 11th attacks. Michael Williams was at tonight's press conference. He joins us now with more. Mike. Good evening. President Bush is running for re-election this year in large part on the credentials and trust he built with many Americans in his role as Commander-in-Chief after 9-11. But did he do enough before 9-11? And did he either misjudge or mislead Americans on the threat posed by Iraq? Those are the kind of tough questions he confronted tonight. Thank you. President Bush faced reporters in the East Room of the White House. He said the U.S. will face down growing violence in Iraq. And he offered a defiant note about what it all means to his re-election chances. I don't plan on losing my job. I plan on telling the American people that I've got a plan to win the war on terror. And uh, I believe they'll stay with me. The president said if more troops are needed to combat violence, he'll send them. And he promised to turn over sovereignty to Iraqis on June 30th, as planned, even though chaos there raises questions about who will take those reins. We seek an independent, free, and secure Iraq. With the coalition to step back from the June 30th pledge, Many Iraqis would question our intentions and feel their hopes betrayed. The president was asked tonight if he's willing to admit to mistakes on post-war planning and the failure to find weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Of course I want to know why we haven't found a weapon yet, but I still know Saddam Hussein was a threat, and the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. President Bush also faced more questions on whether he did enough to thwart the 9-11 attacks. Had I had any inkling whatsoever that the people were going to fly airplanes in the buildings, we would have moved heaven and earth to save the country. The nation is at war against terrorism now, the president reminded Americans, and he promises to keep pressing his case on why he feels best suited to lead that fight. The U.S. will succeed in Iraq, and America will be safer for it, the president promised tonight. Bold promises that are being tested by daily violence in Iraq, Promises that may also play a larger role in the presidential debate and race here than many had imagined at the start of the year. Reporting live from Washington, I'm Michael Williams. Now back to you. Thank you, Michael. Former Attorney General Janet Reno says the worst thing the U.S. can do is set up another agency to handle domestic intelligence. Reno testified this morning before the 9-11 Commission. She warned them against forming a new agency to look into intelligence, saying it would only create more problems. Don't create another agency. The worst thing that you can, or recommend it, the worst thing you can do is create another agency, and then we'll be back talking about whether they can share here or there or what. Reno says one frustration that needs to be addressed is information sharing between the FBI and other governmental agencies. The family of Moy Langhorst will hold a funeral for the Moose Lake Marine on Friday. A visitation will be held from 6 to 9 Thursday night at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Moose Lake. The funeral is at 11 Friday morning at the Holy Angels Catholic Church. The 19-year-old Langhorst was killed in Iraq during hostile fire last week. Langhorst was the second Marine from Moose Lake to be killed in Iraq in the past month. Police and family members launched the first official search for Drew Shadeen since December today. The college student from Minnesota disappeared from outside a Grand Forks shopping mall last November. Today's search focused on an area along the Red River. Mark Daly has the latest. Winter's cold grip on the Red River Valley is slowly loosening. And with the spring, new hope blossoms. The weather conditions are with us now. We've, you know, we've, we've suffered through the snow and the winter and the cold, and, and now it's really easy to see in the woods. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're very hopeful now. Drew Shadeen's cousin was one of several searchers on ATVs this morning looking for any sign of the missing University of North Dakota student. Oh, it's nice, and uh, the water's down, so we're real hopeful we're going to find something. An English bloodhound trainer with new Fine Drew license plates drove 300 miles from South Dakota to help with the search. Spring breeds new life and everything. It, it surely 
brings new enthusiasm to our search. It's much easier for the bloodhounds to work. About a dozen friends and family members combed the woods and the muddy banks of the Red River this morning. One found what he thought was a good omen, an original handmade fine drew button, apparently lost by someone else last fall. This shows me that, you know, she's out there, we'll find her, and uh, this just shows you that we've been here before and we'll be here again and we'll keep doing it until we find her. A convicted sex offender is in jail charged with her kidnapping. This weekend, authorities expect more than 200 people to turn out for a massive search. Wisconsin Governor Jim Doyle signed a bill today that will crack down on stalkers. The bill expands the definition of stalking and strengthens a law already in place. The governor says with changes in technology, it became necessary to update the old legislation. Things change. When that law was passed in the, in the mid-1990s, nobody thought about some of the electronic stalking that goes on. So we needed to update the laws to take into account um, some of the uh, electronic devices that are, are now available. A loophole in the original legislation made it difficult for prosecutors to prove stalking. The new bill also closes that loophole. The governor arrived in Ashland this afternoon where he went on a bill signing blitz. He acted on 16 bills in the Ashland City Hall. One increased ATV and snowmobile routes by ensuring access over the Pine, Pike and Popple Rivers. Another prohibits burning the flag to incite violence and another prevents uh, benefits forest land by making changes in the managed forest land program. A newly signed law in Wisconsin has brought the deer baiting battle to a stalemate. Mariah Craven has more on why many see the regulation as a compromise. After two years of hard work, putting thousands of miles on her car, making hundreds of phone calls, Patty Rantala's hard work has paid off. It's pretty special. I think to a couple years ago, I wouldn't have thought it would ever have happened, but now that it did, it makes me feel like the system can really work and people can work together and compromise. That's why she made the trip from Iron River to Ashland to see Governor Doyle sign Bill 519 into law. It's a bill the governor says is a good deal for both sides. The compromise legislation provides some balance to the regulation of baiting and feeding and calls for some reasonable restrictions on the use of baiting and feeding throughout the state of Wisconsin. It was a good bipartisan approach to a very difficult issue. The law bans baiting and feeding in areas only where chronic wasting disease is present in the deer herd. The compromise, animal lovers and hunters can still feed and bait, while the restrictions help keep CWD from spreading. There was a lot of concern about an earlier proposed rule that would have eliminated all baiting and feeding, and uh, a number of businesses that rely at least in part on the sale of uh, feed were obviously uh, very concerned about whether they were going to be able to continue to operate. One of those businesses belonged to Patty. She says she lost more than $85,000 after the first ban. Now she's glad to see her persistence has paid off. Kept pushing and to where I think everybody down there was getting tired of me talking every time they turned around. In Ashland, Mariah Craven, News 6. Patty says she enjoyed helping with the bill so much she would like to work on another one. In the meantime, she'll focus on putting her business back together. Despite efforts by Duluth City Council to slim down the settlement offer, the Ten Commandments are heading to court. Last night, the council voted to settle with the Minnesota Civil Liberties Union. Their proposal included a number of amendments that would allow them to sell the monument or replace it without being fined. But the MCLU rejected that counteroffer today, meaning the case will head to court. A religious group is appealing a federal judge's order to remove a Ten Commandments monument from a park in La Crosse, Wisconsin. The American Center for Law and Justice argues that the monument sits on private property and that the judge was wrong to have it removed. The judge ruled in February that the tablets unconstitutionally promoted a particular religious view. Mining experts from across the world are meeting in Duluth this week. The 77th annual mining meeting started today at the deck. It's the largest gathering of mining professionals in Minnesota. This year, the conversations are revolving around the sudden demand for steel in China. Both Minnesota and Wisconsin have sent trade delegations to the country in recent months. Their economy has been growing at 6 or 7 percent a year, and an economy that large is enormous. And I, I think any 
sort of affiliation or connection you have with that kind of consumption has got to be good for the northern Minnesota. The meeting is held in conjunction with the U of M Mining Symposium and Trade Show. A leak at Murphy Oil shut down the plant for a few hours today. The Superior Fire Department was called to the refinery just before 11 this morning after a pipe broke. About 500 gallons of oil leaked. The plant is operating at this hour. The cause of the break has not been determined. Coming up on News 6 at 10, dabbling in negative equity. We'll tell you why getting a good deal on a new car loan may hurt your credit rating. The Bay Area bomber is looking to plunk another brewer offering into the water in San Francisco. And how many geeks can you fit into a hatchback? Find out later on News 6 at 10. this place. They know that. That's why I'm always here. They know us on a first name basis when we walk in. And we know them. Yeah, we know so many of the people here. John and Steph. Kristen, Jerry, Ginger and Mary, Paula, Michael, Maureen. We've been to all the casinos in Wisconsin. This is where we bring our friends. Expect more from us. You deserve it. We demand it. Oh, that's right. There's Scotty. Some people work harder than others. That's human nature. Some clothes work harder than others. That's our nature. And like you, we must prove ourselves every day. Wear clothes that work as hard as you do. Carhartt. Original equipment since 1889. Get your hardworking Carhartt at Northwest Outlet, 1814 Belknap in Superior. Hi, Dick and Rico. Twelve years ago, it started with an idea, a single location, and a bunch of used gear. Today, with 31 stores, we're the largest fitness dealer in the Midwest. As a special thanks, we're having our biggest sale of the year. Incredible savings in 30, 40, and up to 70% off new used rental returns and floor models. Treadmills, home gyms, bikes, climbers, and the hot new cross trainers. Priced right, in stock, and ready to go. Why buy new when slightly used will do? Except when the deals are this good. We all need to get away from something. How many vacation days do you have left? Explore Minnesota. I've been thinking, hmm. we should go with the Ford Explorer. Well, I do like the way it rides and handles like a car. And it has that no-charge personal security package. Oh, yeah. I really like that airbag canopy system that covers both rows. The reverse sensing system is a great feature, too. And the power-adjustable pedals would be more comfortable. You know the security package is over $900 worth of features. Hmm. Peace of mind at no extra charge. So with savings of almost $5,000, the only decision left is... When do we get it? Ask the experts at your Northland Ford dealer today. Keeping you in touch with today's news with Michelle Lee, Mark Mallory, meteorologist Paul Hagen, Tom Hansen Sports, and special reports from Barbara Riles. You're watching News 6 at 10. Here's something many Northlanders don't want to hear. Tax day is rapidly approaching. All tax returns must be postmarked by April 15th. The IRS has given out more than $142 billion in refunds this year. Many new car shoppers owe more on their vehicle than it's worth. It's called negative, negative equity, or an upside-down loan. And it's leaving consumers paying on cars they haven't driven for years. Kyle Anderson has some advice for shoppers looking for a way out. No interest, low interest, low payments, no payments. The deals are hard to pass up. Signed a five-year lease, but basically was explained that because of my equity and my trade-in, and down payment that I'd be able to get out of the vehicle anytime. But Bob Dalton was upside down on his new truck the minute he drove it off the lot in 1997. Found out that basically in order to get out of the deal on a one week old truck, I'd need to come up with about eight to nine thousand dollars. Dalton then was like many new car shoppers today, owing more in the car they have than it's worth. Don Smith says part of the problem is unrealistic car buyers. The hard ones are people that 
drive 60,000 miles a year and they're tempted by these long terms and low payments and they do it time after time. But Smith says unlike some dealerships, his will turn away car buyers with significant negative equity simply looking for a deal, instead trying to establish long-term relationships. Rich Call with Consumer Credit Counseling Service says cases like Bob Dalton's are far too common. You can keep mushrooming the problem by trading and then trading again in three years and trading in three years and you can keep pushing the problem out the door but at some point you're going to have to get to the final conclusion that you've got to pay one of these vehicles off at some point. Bankrate.com offers these tips to avoid getting caught upside down. Shooting for at least a 20% down payment instead of the typical 5%. Choose the highest monthly payment and the shortest financing term you can afford. If it's a loan, refinance to a lower rate and a shorter term buy used. And your best bet, hang on to the car you have. Stick it out until it's paid for, or at least until the amount you owe is roughly equal to the car's market value. The sticker on my vehicle is about $17,000, um, and I've close, paid close to $35,000 so far for it. Bob Dalton owes just a few thousand more on his truck and does not look forward to replacing it. It soured me so that I don't think I'll ever buy another new car again, and I definitely won't ever lease. Negative equity also becomes a problem after an accident. Gap coverage on your auto insurance policy will cover the difference between what you owe on the car and how much it's worth. Duluth police and firefighters are investigating two possible arsons in Gary, New Duluth. According to the fire department, both took place this evening at a firefighting training station. One caused $500 in damages to a mobile home that's used for storage. It's believed that both star uh, fires rather were started by matches. Grass fires are popping up more and more this time of year. Today, crews from three different fire departments and the DNR responded to a grass fire in Solway Township. The blaze destroyed two small buildings before firefighters got it under control. The cause is still under investigation. The nice weather brought out both the birds and the bugs to Silver Lake in Virginia today. But will the sunny skies last a few more days? Spends in next with the forecast. The Dodge Heavy Duty Ram is here with a re-engineered Cummins 600 turbo diesel engine that generates a best-in-class 600 pound speed of torque, yet a remarkably quieter ride. It offers best-in-class interior space. And of course, when you really need it, better towing capability than Ford. The new Dodge Heavy Duty Ram. Grab life by the horns at your local Dodge dealer. It's a nice couch, huh? What kind of leather is this? Yeah, leathery. Leather. You can't be an expert at everything. Very fringy. That's why at Home Furniture, every department is staffed with a different expert who's been specially trained in that area. We got some botany. For oh. expert advice, there's no place like home. Fine furniture doesn't have to be expensive. Traditional, contemporary, casual, or vintage, fine furniture is now available from Home's Passages Collection. My Subway Salad, the new Atkins-friendly classic club salad, made fresh right in front of me with turkey, ham, and ranch dressing. It tastes awesome. I'm doing the whole low-carb thing, and I got zero willpower. Think I'm kidding? My kid wanted a goldfish. You can swim, right? So, my Subway Salad, all the Subway fresh salads, it's what I eat when I want to eat fresh. My work, my hobbies, my family, all are very important to me. So when I hurt my shoulder, I went to Orthopedic Associates right away, and we arranged for surgery at Lake Walk Surgery Center. Thanks to my surgeon and Lake Walk's expert care, it was done in a day. I was, well, amazed. Lake Walk was private and comfortable, and I'm back to business as usual. This is my life, and Lake Walk is my choice.
Meteorologist Paul Hagen is certified by the American Meteorological Society. Tonight's weather is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? It definitely was. Uh, at 6 o'clock, you asked me if there was frost oh, in the ground. Oh, did you go digging around? <laughs> no, I, didn't, I didn't dig any holes, but I did uh, contact our weather service office, and they actually take temperatures of the soil at different uh, depths. And yeah. so there is some frost at about 8 inches in the ground. I have a graphic here hmm. that shows you the different temperatures at different depths. Ah. At the surface, we consider the surface about two and a quarter inches. 33, we go down eight inches, and it is 31 degrees, so a little bit of frost there. I mean, it's not so solid. So you could, you could still dig a hole. But you could probably dig through that. You go down 60 inches, and it gets warmer, obviously, as you go further down. Sure. It wasn't a deep frost this winter. And, of course, those two to eight inch range there in the uh, upper part of the crust there, the surface, does get below freezing. If the temperatures are cold enough below freezing, like some of the last couple of nights, it'll freeze all the way down to that eight inches. We'll go out into the weather garden where the pavement never freezes. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, still across parts of the, well, Canal Park anyways, but temperatures are a little bit cooler. Off to the northwest, a little puddle of cooler air is trying to sneak back into northern Minnesota. We've seen temperatures in the 30s and 40s up in the Iron Range. Still hanging on to the 40s, though, throughout most of the area, 48 in Superior, 45 here in Duluth and 54 degrees at the Duluth Harbor and we have 50 here in Canal Park so it feels downright balmy still mild out here if you want to go on the lake walk for a wa evening walk it is still mild in the 50s 37 as you move up the shore towards Grand Marais and Silver Bay taking a look at some of the temperatures we have across Minnesota and Wisconsin it is also mild and continues to be mild across the western two-thirds of the country 70s and eastern Montana Wyoming and also through the western Dakotas Williston Bismarck and Rapid City saw high temperatures in the low 70s today our high temperature in the ports was 57 degrees today. Not bad at all. It did make it to 61 degrees the Duluth Harbor with the west winds. Now tomorrow Duluth Harbor will be one of the coldest spots in the area. Probably not getting out of the low 40s for high temperatures. Cold air now being pushed off to the east where it's sitting all the way down to the south. Temperatures in the 30s as far south as Georgia. Very cold for them. That's because of this big storm system that's drawing that colder air in. The last four or five days before today, the cold air was sitting over the central part of the country as that storm system was closer to us. When you want to get rid of the cold air, you got to get a big storm system like this away because it's like a toilet bowl of cold air flushing and sucking all that cold air into the storm center. But we have a warm air ridge. And out on the edge of that, we are seeing some of these mid-level clouds that we saw this afternoon. And we'll probably see some of those again tomorrow afternoon. And a little bit more of a potent storm system, but not really much organization to it is going to make its way eastward and as it does it's drawing up some more moisture not a lot of moisture though it's still very dry and it will still be very dry the next few days but a little bit more of an increase in moisture and also bringing in not cooler air but just a wind shift in the convergence of those south winds and west winds Thursday and Friday could squeeze a couple isolated showers and thunderstorms out of the atmosphere on Thursday and Friday and then a better chance of some scattered showers and thunderstorms on Sunday it looks like before a little bit of a cool down comes for early next week but it doesn't look like anything we saw last week temperatures not in the 30s but probably upper 40s for highs the mid-level clouds starting to break up and move to the south up along the Canadian border skies are clearing out and we'll see some sunshine tomorrow but we'll also see a few of those mid-level clouds once again a quiet night dropping down to 30 degrees tonight pretty mild a couple degrees actually above normal west winds will switch to the east and we're gonna have those east southeast winds tomorrow 5 to 15 so it will be cooler by the lake should make it to 50 over the hill but probably only low to mid 40s immediately close to Lake Superior a chance of those showers and thunderstorms on Thursday and Friday wind should switch to the west Friday, and so everybody should be warm again, even along the North Shore, but a cool down for early next week. Mark and Michelle? All right, Sven, thank you. And still to come on, New 6 of 10, baseball dusted off its winter rust on the Iron Range today as two Northland College teams square off in Virginia. And the Bay Area bomber looks to pass a family member in the record books today. Tom's in next with sports. Our business is insured with American Family. We've been partners now just about one year. Steve is good at taking care of high-profile customers and getting straight to the point and getting business completed. I'm good at bringing in the business, smiling at the people, and getting Steve to close the deals out. The toughest part about being partners is when we have to make each other take a day off. And yours is tomorrow. And my day is tomorrow, and I don't want to take off. And what is tomorrow? Tomorrow is my wife's birthday. Don't forget that. American Family Insurance. It's GM Truck Fest at the Northland's only exclusive Chevrolet dealer, Luther Agabrex Chevrolet. All was the best prices and selection. And talk about selection, Silverado's 159 to choose from with savings up to $9,500. Avalanches, make the switch and save up to $8,700. See a salesperson for details about the Truck Fest at Luther Agabrex Chevrolet. Before yourself, the brand new It wasn't that I was lost. 
It was just that the word overwhelmed me. I needed help, help understanding what was happening. And then I found it. Cancer would not have the last word. There was a way. There were people who could help. I had hope, and that made all the difference. St. Luke's Cancer Care Center, the patient above all else. It's a sailor one's got all these great new cell phones. It's got this one where I can be on the phone, I can be like, hang on, and then I go, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then boom, you are so on my phone. I am so looking at you it's right a in my photo phone. messaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's got this great thing. I can check movie listings and sports scores, and it's all out here, and it comes in here. It's like, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's uh, web browsing. Yeah, if you want to get technical, I guess, yeah. Sign up for a plan for $25 a month, plus get a $50 account credit and up to $50 off a new camera phone. Cellular One, simply innovative. Replacing old windows, doors, and siding can make a big difference in the look and energy efficiency of your home. For durability and dependability, call on the specialists at Arrowhead Window and Door. We recommend quality choices to fit your needs and your budget, from low-end to custom designs, all installed by professionals with decades of experience and a guaranteed warranty. For all your exterior remodeling needs, call Arrowhead Window and Door at 729-9000. The Twin Ports Replacement Window and Door Headquarters. And now, sports with Tom Hansen. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Second Wind Exercise Equipment. Well, the Twins were off today. But not the Brewers. That's right, and, and the Giants actually have some former Twins, so it, it's almost like the Twins were in action. A.J. <laughs> Pruszynski, Dustin Moore uh, taking on the Brewers today, but all eyes certainly on Barry Bonds. For the 660th time in his big league career, Barry Bonds trotted around the bases for his home run trot yesterday. He was looking to do so for the 661st time tonight, making him Major League Baseball's third all-time leading home run hitter all alone. He went into the game tied with Willie Mays. Brewers 4-4 four and four overall heading into the contest. We picked things up in the opening inning, bottom of the first, and there was a couple of long balls early, but off the bat, not off the bat of Bonds, Marquise Grissom up and over and left 2-0 in favor of his Giants, his second home run of the year. Barry's first at bat, base on balls. Brewers didn't pitch, him, pitch to him in the first inning. We move on to the third inning. Again a home run, again off the back, bat of Marquise Grissom. The former Brewer, a blast to center, 3-0 in favor of Sam Fran. His third of the year, second of the game. Barry would pop up in the third single in the fifth and then the seventh. There's a big rip at the Ben Ford offering. Up, up, and gone into the drink. 661 it is. Made it 4-1 in favor of San Francisco in the seventh inning. He is all alone. 661 career home runs for San Francisco's Barry Bonds. Right now it's in the eighth inning. San Fran 4, Brewers 1 out in San Francisco. Community College Baseball this afternoon in Virginia. Basabi Range at Virginia. Cold wind blowing. As Itasca Community College takes on Masabi Range in a doubleheader, Itasca wins the first game 7-6 to six in nine innings. In the second game, Itasca would score alert early, and by the sixth inning, Masabi was able to get one run as Mike Twaddle would score from third as Itasca's catcher can't handle the low pitch by Cody Bunkelman. Masabi trailed 7-1. That's how the game ended. Itasca 7, Masabi Range 1. You can read more in Masabi Daily News tomorrow. Jimmy Lane will have that story. Tonight was game four of the Stanley Cup playoffs between Montreal and Boston. The Bruins lead the series now three games to one with the 4-3 double overtime win tonight. Game five back at the Fleet Center on Thursday. And while we were in Boston, we had a chance to catch up with former Bulldog Norm McIver. He's now an assistant coach with the Bruins and enjoys working with Mike Sullivan, the new Bruins head coach. You know, Mike, this is his second year coaching. and he, Last year was his first year down in the American League, and uh, he's done a terrific job. He's a... Uh, He's meticulous about everything he does. He's extremely well prepared, and uh, you know he, he's been a joy. I mean, I've, I really enjoyed working with him this year, and we've had a lot of fun, and uh, we've had some success, and we really want to continue that success. The season in UMB hockey history was also the longest in school history, and wrapped up yesterday at the deck. Their fans had one last chance to get their favorite players' autographs, see firsthand the newest trophies in the UMB trophy case: the NCAA Frozen Four hardware and the Hobie Baker Award that went to UMB's Junior Lassard. UMB started their season on October the 4th, and the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame game, their final game of the year, was played last Thursday when they fell to the Denver Pioneers. 5-3 in the semis. Denver went on to win the national tournament. Indy's junior Lassard was named to the all-tournament team and also set an all-time attendance record 
for a college hockey game at the Fleet Center in Boston, the Frozen Four did. UMB finished the year with 28 wins, 13 losses, and four ties. The amazing part is they returned 12 juniors next year. So again, high expectations for the club next season. Indeed. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. And we will be right back. It's inspired, but is it more than a car? Yes. Does it have the government's highest crash test rating? Yes. Does all-wheel drive make it more than a minivan? Yes. Does a lower stance make it well beyond the SUV? Yes. The Chrysler Pacifica. Is the 04 Pacifica with 0% APR financing plus a $2,000 cash allowance the best value in America? Absolutely. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. My mom never knows when I'm thinking of cold. Stay back, Mom. I think it's contagious. Mm. You don't want me to give this to anybody else. I don't feel so good. Tell your mom you're having a hallucination. Mom, is that you? You don't always have this much control over your health. That's why we give you choices that let you control your health care. You choose your own doctor. You make your own decisions. You're in control. Medica. Your choices. Your life. I think I had some bad chicken. What do these people have in common? Over 1.6 million have found a simple way to save money with Quest. Now they can save up to $10 a month by combining local, long distance, and high speed internet all on one bill. Starting at just $53 a month with long distance for only five cents a minute more. You can't beat that. All backed by our Quest promise of value. No one else does that. If things keep going this way, we're going to need a bigger field. What's going on here? We like to call it our spirit of service in action. Suckers. How about a tasty McRib sandwich to go with those fries? That's right. Your favorite McRib sandwiches are now at McDonald's. Get them at an extra value meal and get them quick. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. It's always fun to shop for gorgeous things that sparkle. For work. For play or just because you feel like it. Get more every day. Some people got together tonight at the Great Lakes Aquarium to see how many geeks they could fit into a small car. The event was held for those who consider themselves a geek, dweeb, or spaz, and to get ready for the annual Geek Prom, which is a Saturday. One of the nerds who squeezed into the car said there are many reasons for doing it. This is for the third ever Geek Prom, which will be held here at the Great Lakes Aquarium, and uh, because we're all very special people, and we need to find very strange ways to let the world know that. In all, 21 geeks piled into the car. The aquarium doors will open at 8 o'clock Saturday night for the event. I'd get claustrophobic. You know, oh, my you goodness. So Why weren't we it. invited? We I, qualified. I, well, yeah, I, I qualify. <laughs> Maybe Sven qualifies, too. I don't know. Sven? Well, you've opened that up for all sorts of meteorologist <laughs> jokes. It looks like stuff we did when uh, back in my meteorology program. When the sun rises tomorrow morning, about 30 degrees for temperature. Should see some sunshine, but there will be a mix of clouds and sunshine again tomorrow, just like today with those mid-level clouds. Nothing to worry about. No rain associated with those, but temperatures will be cooler by the lake. Upper 40s to low 50s, I think, over the hill, but mid-50s inland. Mark and Michelle? What else do you do at college, Sven? Uh, we'll talk about that another time. All Don't right. have time. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching tonight. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions. We suit your style. Located downtown Duluth. Weather Garden, designed by Peterson's Gardens and Landscapes. Located just a short drive southeast of Superior. You're watching NBC, America's late night leader.